All right, let's have some fun, shall we, though, with this uh, Rudy Giuliani clip. I've been waiting <laughs> since last night. It's felt like a week to talk about Rudy Giuliani on The mass Singer. This footage, I mean, it's like the most anticipated thing for me since, like, I'm sure how most teenage boys feel about a Marvel movie. I'm so, I was so pumped to watch Rudy Giuliani on uh, The Masked Singer. And it's as dystopian, as bad acid trippy as you might think. Here it is. Giuliani is revealed as The Masked Singer, dressed as some sort of colorful parrot in the jack-in-the-box and sings bad to the bone. <laughs> Associate Attorney General, former mayor of New York City. No, it's not Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> no way! Oh, oh my God! God. Wow! I thought that show a real picture. <laughs> I had no idea. Wow! I, this is definitely something I never. Would have guessed. <laughs> Can you pause it for a sec? So Why? Notice that Kim Jones, well, they've had uh, Sarah Palin right before the pandemic exactly. started dressed as uh, some sort of colorful animal as well. She sang Baby Got Back. No, just keep it up there. Um, but like, so Robin Thicke put it on. I would have never expected this. Jenny McCarthy is like about to start crying out of joy. Um, yeah, she's loving it. She's loving it. And no surprise, though. Ken, Ken, Ken Jong's pissed. Ken Jong's like, how many times can I say I truly didn't know who the person was going to be and I, <laughs> I object to their entire public sort of <laughs> work? Yeah, I've, but like, I mean, that's this is what the show is, right? It ends like this every time. I would have never guessed. It's peekaboo. It's it's like, it's goo goo gaga for I know. adults. <laughs> like, like, I never expected that. Like, the, the whole point of this is like... I, I, yeah, they're in a mask. Yeah. God damn it. All it's right, keep reveal. going. <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Giuliani, with all of the controversy that's surrounding hey, you right Ken. now, I think it surprises us all that you're here on the mask singing. Why would you me too? <laughs> uh, man, what made you decide to do this? Well, I guess the main reason is I just had a granddaughter, Grace. Oh, I want her yeah. to know that you should try Aww. everything. The Even simplest people in the world. All right, pause it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Jenny McCarthy goes, this is just a way you could, this is his reclamation project here, right? Like that's why he goes on there. So he can say in the middle of him being embroiled in the January 6th commission nonsense, um, well, not nonsense, but the investigation, his role in, in, a coup attempt. in a coup attempt. He just wants to show his granddaughter that Poppy has fun. And some See, you can do election fraud world, and so dance on TV. Like yeah. the, the whole it's just so false though. Like Nick Cannon being like, ah, you know, you're here. Ha <laughs> ha, you know. It's like <laughs> Like he 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 feels that simultaneously like yes he's got it, going to do his job and like have an affable conversation with the guy, but you need to like throw in that I'm not super like thrilled about this if you read between the lines it's just embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, there are only right. so many Z like celebrities. You and unlikely, and I couldn't think of anything more unlike me and unlikely than this. <laughs> and I enjoy the show. I have for years. And it just seemed like it would be fun. And I don't get to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I just would like to know, in your package, it said you officiated 200 right. weddings. Is that true? Absolutely true. But the mayor of New York can marry people. And when I found out I could Wait, do can that, you pause I it? Yeah. took advantage of doing a wedding anytime I could because it? being mayor... What? That, yeah, that's, that's, that's the notable fun fact about Rudy Giuliani? Yeah, that's uh, the that's the one that's in his package. The oh, really interesting thing we just found out about you, uh, Rudy Giuliani. You've officiated two hundred weddings. Oh my that's God. I, I can assure you that's not the most interesting thing Rudy Giuliani has done. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Boxers or briefs? When you put your hand down your pants during that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen uh, sting on you? Do you want to talk about yeah. that? Rudy, we have tasked a team of dozen researchers uh, for three days to try to find a apolitical trivia fact about you, <laughs> and we actually found one. So here it is. <laughs> Nobody can get offended about this. You've just done a lot of weddings. That's nice. He's a romantic. 
he, yeah, he's a romantic type. That's yep. Yeah. He loves long walks on the beach. It would be a very tough job. You deal with tragedy. So if you can do a wedding, it kind of lifts your day. It's kind of like doing the show. Why is it the show? Right, right, right. And your family's doing the show. You're your granddaughter. There's no better reason to do a show like this. Man. Well, I can tell you. This is a real wonderful experience. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you very much. And right now, here to perform on Mass, the artist formerly known as the Jack in the Box. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Rudy Giuliani. Cheers. Before I take you, I'll break your challenges more, baby. Before I am through. Come on, Ken. Fight. He should have. I think Giuliani's mistake was not doing like white crime by little Dicky instead. You know, because if, if, if he had won the show, they could never put him in jail after that. Do you guys not want to hear his rendition of Bad to the Bone? I, I just, don't at all. Uh, he might also, be copyright struck, although he does it in spoken yeah. word. He's at the Smash Poetry Bad to the Bone thing. He's I, he's doing the Rex Harrison in My Fair Lady, right? You can't actually sing, so I'm just going to kind of speak to the beat. Right, right. I just think it's yeah. interesting that, like, or maybe it speaks to, like, a serious intellectual, just, like, lack of, I don't know, reflection in most Americans that, like, the most redeeming thing that somebody who, like, hates literally everybody or, like, is out to make the world a worse place objectively can do is, like, treat their family nice. And then, like, that's just, like, a positive characteristic that people are like, yeah. oh, he tried to usher in a new age of global fascism, but he sure <laughs> does love his dogs. And you're like, oh. yeah, I mean... He no. also doesn't even do that. I mean, yeah. like I, th th his his but, past with uh, marriages, I think, is a bit checkered in terms of like moving oh, yeah. from woman to the next woman. So, but he does super have careful. offspring, and they had offspring, so that makes him cuddly. Yeah, he, I mean, he super it, gives a fuck about them. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely overstating. It's ra rather, it's definitely overstating his role in the Trump administration to say he even like helped try to usher in anything he was just like a hype man for the world's like worst president yeah well uh, i mean the worst president of the last like i don't know well of 2017 and 2020 probably probably <laughs> I, um, I, we should also note that the uh this show is very heavily edited and um from the original reports it actually said that robin thick and ken jung left right away and had to be convinced to come back out to continue doing the show uh, so they might have actually everything you saw might have happened after they walked out originally. Well, because also, they keep just doing a cut to uh, Robin Thicke going, "This is great," and then they cut back to Rudy Giuliani. The only thing they did show that was accurate was Ken Jeong does walk off at the end here. Yes, yes. Also, it should be noted that they actually say in the um, in their little in like a little uh, disclosure at the bottom during this episode that due to COVID nineteen protocols, clips from the audience are actually also. Yeah. So taken from <laughs> other episodes of the show. So those reactions wow. you see, which has to really suck for the people in those reactions. I had like, that thought too. Yeah. That's like, like, if you're like, like, that's not people going like, right. Rudy. Yeah. This is hilarious. Yeah. Right. Like, there's like that... Nicholas Shea being there and it's like, and then you just splice it over Rudy Giuliani. Right. That's real, <laughs> right. That's real right. Trash right. Hour. Uh, Matt has something pulled up on the screen. I mean, the thing about it is like, like with Ken Jong's reaction, it's like, what show did you think you were on? They've literally done this exact same thing. Here's the um, Sarah Palin. Yeah. Palin! Can I be your hype man? Can I be your hype man? You get sprung! Oh my god, what is that? And I'm pretty uh, sure I'll they say, had like Spicer someone on. Sorry if that audio was really Spicer loud. Spicer did uh, Dancing with the Stars. Oh, right. I'll, I'll say the difference between Palin and um, Giuliani for the for, for the people who were there might be that at that point in the the, the timeline of Sarah Palin, she uh, was more of a reality TV show uh, person yeah. than a politician. Whereas Rudy Giuliani is literally fresh over, or fresh off, I should say, of trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, I just watched Game Change, like 
last week, the, you know, the HBO special that I always talk about being the defining moment of my political. uh, I remember it too. Yeah. I just watched that last week and that came out in 2012 and it was very harsh on Sarah Palin and very forgiving, forgiving on John McCain, to be perfectly honest, as though it was trying to frame him. And Steve Schmidt portrayed by Woody Harrelson and Nicole Wallace, who I, who plays her in it. Uh, Nicole Wallace. Oh, um, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, something. I'm looking not, it up. Not a Pullman. Uh, I always think she looks like Vera Famiglia, but I cannot remember. Sarah, Sarah Paulson. Pullman? I was oh, about Sarah to Paulson, say it was yeah. Sarah Paulson, and it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you know. It's very trying to redeem John McCain, even as the movie starts with him saying that he wishes like Joe Lieberman would have been his running mate, as though that would have resulted in a better, like, a better outcome. But you know, frankly, he was worse on Sarah Palin's career than Sarah Palin on his career. Like mm-hmm. you know, they pulled Sarah Palin. This is not like to defend Sarah Palin, but they pulled Sarah Palin into the spotlight when that kind of like persona on the Republican Party was not like mainstream. Uh, now, she was Trump before Trump was Trump. This, it's, t- and she's not as good at it, but it's the it's the same like raw material. Exactly. If she had been percolating up in you know Alaska as like a Tea Party darling instead of the vice presidential pick for John McCain between like 2008 to like she 2016, she could have run in that primary and maybe she wouldn't have beat Trump, but she would have you know put up a fight. But you know her entire career got like derailed by that in her own personal like family drama and then she just ends up in like sarah palin's alaska and like the next year on mtv at the height of mtv mm-hmm. trash reality television shows uh so you know i think that she's trying to make a comeback now and that, like that started it you know she sees the marjorie taylor greens the lauren Bobberts, and this like that could have been sarah palin you know but at a higher level yeah she was <sighs> before her time she was before her time a trailblazer <laughs> she was and they don't even and see the thing is they don't even pay her lip service the republican party like you know because she was blamed for john mccain's terrible performance like kind of just you know distanced themselves from sarah palin but you know she she set the standard she did but anyway i could uh, be a host on the mass singer all i have to do and get paid what like two million dollars for five weeks of work of just saying what this is Whoa. the last thing I was expecting until next week, when that will be the last thing I'm expecting. This is crazy! Yeah. They need their heads to explode or, like, to start, you know, foaming at the yeah. mouth or something next time. I mean, Amp watch... Come on, folks. Watch a show for adults, like Lego Masters. They have... <laughs> I've actually recently gotten into building Lego models, so, I mean, I might start... Uh, I think that's hosted by, what, Job from Rest Development? Exactly. Uh, oh, still. it is? Because yeah. uh, he was Will a... Arnett. He was in the Lego movie, right? Oh, really? Uh, the, he played Batman in the Lego movie. Oh, that makes sense. He was really good. Um, I have a lot. I, I could talk for hours about Legos because I would really do le- or Lego, as people like to say. But the problem with that's Lego... That's the plural of Lego? Yeah. it's. But the problem I have with it is is it is expensive. It's like, And I get upset about intellectual property protection, too, because they're clearly like stopping people from making their own competitor blocks because we have uh cornered the market on stacking things together matt you could still enjoy legos even if they're not sharing their ip <laughs> it's can, too expensive with- though like if it was cheap then i wouldn't care about the ip <laughs> i'd be like fine you can have that monopoly but it's like for a, a decent set i can i never got like the biggest sets as a kid like because they're like 120 bucks or like yeah. 80 bucks it's like i'll get the 35 dollar one and that is like a car anyway I'm, I'm bitter you can start playing with meccano like the british do I don't like the sound of that. Exactly. Yeah, no one does. That's why Lego. <laughs> has, that's why people pay three hundred dollars for Lego. 